Hello children. In today's session, we are going to learn about the fifth chapter of your science textbook that is the fundamental unit of life. The fundamental unit of life means the basic unit of life that is a cell. Whether it is a plant or animal or any bacteria or a very small microscopic protozoa, in all of these living creatures or living beings, the fundamental structural and functional unit of life is a cell. In this chapter, we are going to study about the discovery of cell as well as various shape and sizes of cell and we will also study about the various components of cells and its function in detail. Children, now let us begin with discovery of cells. Discovery of cell was not a one-shot discovery, but in this discovery, so many scientists at different time period contributed a lot. And in this, in year 1665, Robert Hooke, an English scientist, saw the cells in a thin slice of cork with his self-designed microscope. But unfortunately, the cells which he saw were non-living. In his experiment, he took a thin slice of a bark of a tree or a cork and he observed that sample in his self-designed microscope and the structure which he found was resembling to honeybee comb like structure. We all know that honeybee comb is made up of so many small small units. So the same type of structure he found in his observation. To each compartment which he found in his observation he named it as a cell. His discovery indicated for the first time that living organism consists of number of small structures. After Robert Hooke's discovery, it was Antony von Leeuwenhoek who first time observed the living cell from a pond water sample in year 1674. And in year 1831, Robert Brown discovered nucleus in a cell and similarly after few years in year 1838 and 39 Schleiden and Schran formulated cell theory and that cell theory was further added by Virchow in year 1855. Meanwhile in year 1839 Purkinje coined the term protoplasm for fluid substance of a cell. The cell theory was propounded by three scientists, Schleiden, Schwann and Virchow. In year 1838, Schleiden, who was a German botanist, defined cells as a basic unit of plant cells. In his samples, he took plant cell and he observed plant cell for the first time. Then, after this, next year only, Theodore Schwann in year 1839, he observed animal cell and after that in year 1855, a German pathologist Virchow observed a cell and conducted experiment and then concluded ominous cellula e cellula means all the cells arise from pre-existing cells and the discovery of all these three scientists propounded cell theory which says three important main point the first one is all the living beings are made up of cell and the second is Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms 
and the third one is all living organism arise from pre-existing cells children we know that cells are too small to be seen by naked eye so we need some instrument some machinery to visualize these cells so microscope is the machinery with which we can easily observe a cell microscopes are high resolution instrument that are used for observing fine details of very small objects here in this slide you can see two pictures one is of compound microscope and the other one is of electron microscope after few days when you will perform practicals in your lab you will see this compound microscope and you will also make slide by your own and you will observe it under compound microscope the other side the other one microscope which is seen with a uh, seen is electron microscope this is a microscope which shows highest resolution power till date and this type of electron microscope shows the internal minute structures of the living forms this electron microscope is of three types that is scanning electron microscope transmission electron microscope and scanning transmission electron microscope the of magnifying lenses led to the discovery of microscopic world now we know that single cells may constitute a whole organism and because of this only we are able to categorize organisms into two categories that is unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms we know that unicellular organisms are made up of only one cell like in case of chlamydomonas amoeba and paramecium whereas multicellular organisms are made up of so many cells like in case of human being plants animals etc irrespective of unicellular or multicellular organism the cells perform similar basic functions for their survival and we know that all the living organisms are made up of these cells so the cells which are present in them performs same type of basic functions now let us discuss about the shape and sizes of cell the shape and sizes vary but all these shapes are ultimately determined by the specific function which that cell perform here in this slide you can see there are various images in which you can see here muscle cells which are spindle shape rbcs which are biconcave in shape and nerve cell which is highly branched structure and leaf pore guard cells which have kidney bean shape you can also see diatoms which have star shape and paramecium which has horseshoe like shape now the function which is performed by these individual cell decides or determines that what will be the shape of these cells like for example nerve cell has highly branched shape now the function of nerve cell is to very quickly transfer the message or the nerve impulses to brain and accordingly take an action so that fast action can be achieved with the help of this branched structure that is why its structure is branched each living cell has the capacity to perform certain functions we know that there is division of labor in multicellular organism if we will take example of our body we are also a multicellular organism in our body also there are various uh, organs like for example heart is there which has a very specific and very important function that is pumping of blood similarly we have stomach which digest the food and in the same way we have so many organs present in our body which perform specific function that shows that within our body also there is division of labor in the same way in unicellular organism also 
there is division of labor seen inside that single cell that means the cell organelles which are present inside the cell perform their specific function and thus shows a kind of a division of labor a cell is a tiny mass of protoplasm which is surrounded by a membrane and is capable of performing all functions of life a typical cell is formed of three main parts that is plasma membrane the nucleus and the cytoplasm now there are some brain teasers for you to solve so grab a pen and a piece of paper and start solving these questions the first one is who discovered living cells the second is name the smallest and the largest cell and the last question is name the cell which keeps on changing its shape and is present in us so i think 3 minutes are sufficient for you to start writing the answer of these questions hope you got all the answers correct so let us discuss the answers now the first question was who discovered living cell and the answer is lewin hawk in year 1674 and the second question was name the smallest and largest cell the smallest cell is mycoplasma which has a size of 10 micrometer whereas the largest cell is of ostrich egg which has the dimension of 10 cm long and 30 13 cm wide and the third question was name the cell which keeps on changing its shape and is present in us and the answer is wbc's or white blood cell